I'm Siwa Pili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, I am wearing a Saki Estewa original. Can you see it? Don't I look great? And with us today is Wendell Saki Estewa. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It was such a pleasure meeting you the other day. You're here from Southern California, Los Angeles area? Yes, I am. And he's a clothing designer. And you have the most beautiful clothes. I just fell in love with your line of clothes. Thank you. Give me a little bit about your background. Where are you from? I am Hopi Native American Indian. Um, my father is from Second Mesa. Uh, he is a well-known uh, Native jeweler. Um, his name is Michael Kabodi, and my mother's side is from Mungkopi Tuba City area. So um, that's where my family originates from. And I've never actually lived on the reservation as a child. Mm -hmm. I think when I was born, um, we had come to Phoenix, um, and that's where I was. That's where I grew up okay. in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Excellent. Now, have you always used the Native influence for your line of clothing? Yes. Um, the, it originated from my father. Um, after seeing him doing his jewelry, his art that he has done over many, many years, mm -hmm. um, it inspired me. I had always done different types of art, I guess you could say, growing up, ceramics, uh, beading you know, uh, painting, drawing, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, um, I remember telling my grandmother, you know, when we were, we were really young, I was really, really young, and my grandmother raised me. And she was a pattern maker and seamstress, and that's where my abilities came from. Uh -huh. And so um, I remember telling her, you know, I'm going to go to L.A., I'm going to be a designer, and blah, 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 you know, dreaming, of course, uh -huh. you know, at, that, uh -huh. at, at that age. But um, she, you know... It, uh, it more stemmed from my father and seeing a lot of his art, seeing a lot of the color that he used and the techniques that he used in, in his artistry. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it got started. And it brought my family, my, actually my father and my brothers, full circle. And uh, we were kind of distant at mm -hmm. one point and it kind of brought us together. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, that's it, yeah. Good. so it did have kind of a happy ending to it, I guess you could uh -huh. say. Yeah. And you've designed all kinds of clothes. You said you started in, with making bathing suits, was it? Or yeah, I was, yeah I, mean, I was really young, really, really green. And I grew up uh, in Phoenix, and I had moved into um, Scottsdale, Scottsdale area. Mm -hmm. And I started off, I just saw an ad that had come out for a swimwear line. And they needed help, like an assistance type mm -hmm. thing. They said they would actually train. Mm -hmm. So I um, thought, okay, well, I'll apply for it. You know, because I, I, I did like clothing. I did like the aspect of uh, designing and doing all that. So I applied for it, and I got the job, and I started off doing swimwear. Yeah. Now, you told me when you went to school, to clothing school? Yes. You had to design something with t-shirts, or how was that, tank tops, or? Um, your, at the time, we in? were given a project. Um, what it was is they wanted us to purchase uh, men, well, men's t-shirts come in three packets, like three in a package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted us to buy two packages. They said we could do anything we wanted to. We could dye it, cut it up, do whatever we want. But we had to create three actual pieces, mm -hmm. you know, um, a starting of a clothing line, um, and we could do whatever we wanted to do with it, um, be cr as creative as we wanted to do with it. We had to sketch it. We had to, um, you know, of course, make the pattern and sew with it also mm -hmm. and create the whole garment. So they actually gave us two weeks to work on it. And um, so what I did is I, I actually dyed, I cut it up, I dyed the fabric, uh, black and I made a long sleeve hood, long sleeve men's hoodie. Um, I did an actual small short out of it, and like a zip front short because you know you only have so much fabric. So mm -hmm. you tried to be as creative and try to do like a top and a bottom. And um, I also did a um, like a tank top made out of it, and it was a different tank top for a man. A, a man. So um, that was one of the projects that we were given, and um, it actually turned out really nice. And yeah. that was a project once you were in or, or to get into the school? 
No, that was actually when I was already in, um, mm -hmm. and I was probably about halfway in um, the, no, about a quarter into the semester. Mm -hmm. When you go into fashion, they really push you, and I mean, it's boom, boom, boom. You, you know, they give you, okay, you do this, you got to do this many drawings, you got to be able to create this storyboard, you got to be able to pull these fabrics. I mean, it's really, um, you know, it, it's one right after the other, and they push you. That's how the fabric, in, I mean, that's how the design in industry is. And you live near Hollywood, obviously, if you live in uh, Los Angeles. So well, originally, you... I did live in, when I first moved there, I lived in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, you did? Yeah, and um, I had moved several times after that just because it was too much. I mean, at the, at, when I first moved there, I didn't have a car, so I was on the bus like the first year, I think it was. And it just, you know, you're going up into the Hollywood Hills, and you're like w literally walking uphill. And, um, you know, it, it was just got to be a little bit much. So I moved further out just to, you know, I, I think it's just more of a balance of peace, mm -hmm. peace of mind, because Los Angeles can be a little crazy. I so, bet. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but now um, I lived in uh, L.A. for about 15 years, and I just moved to San Diego. So I've been there about three years now. Oh, okay. And I love San Diego. Do you? Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. It's I do, be too. Yeah. Very clean. Yeah. Very nice. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, I love the weather. Yeah. So now you've m worked with movie stars, actors, yes, yes. and the whole industry. Musicians. Tell me about that. When I first got started, I actually started with Smokey Robinson, oh. of all people. And um, actually me and his daughter, Tamala um, Robinson, were friends. We, uh, she had an idea of a clothing, a children's clothing line. And a lot of it was inspired from her daughter. And... Um, how the name came about, the logo, Born Star, was uh, Smokey used to say, all children's, it was, I think it was like, all children are born stars. And so that's kind of like how we took his tagline and created Born Star. And uh, that was in 2000. So uh, she designed to 2000. too? No, um, she actually gave me input into regards to she did a research in regards to what type of clothing she wanted and age range. Uh -huh. So from that point, we put together sketches, fabrications, and things of that nature, and uh, built a line from them. And uh, it actually got a really good, great response. I think a lot of it too was because of the name and uh -huh. you know where it came from and things of that nature. And um, immediately we were in Fred Siegel's. You know, we hit like the big stores and. We got write-ups in Earnshaw's Children's, you know, um, which is their their really big fashion magazine, and it was great. It was really great. It was a really great experience to work with him. And He's a very very spiritual man and such a kind heart. Oh, wow, yeah. how exciting! Yeah. And have you worked with other famous people that we might know? Yeah, from that when I went to work with Snoop Dogg and um, with him. Uh, I actually met his um, manager, well, it was kind of like a business partner, not really a manager, it was more like a business partner. And um, I worked with this, started off working with him, and uh, the inspiration came from Snoop Dogg. And um, the line was called Motivate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the tagline, because Snoop Dogg is, you know, at the time was such a um, marijuana smoker. Uh, the tag, uh, you know, the name was M O T A uh -huh. Motivate, so that's oh, how it okay. was spelled. Yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. so that's what it was, and that's words. how, we, yeah, a plant words, and we created. It was more of an urban streetwear line. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, we start with a lot of uh, plaids, you know, things of that nature, kind of sportswear, the baggy shorts. You know, it was back in those that time. Also, mm -hmm. it was like two thousand, mm -hmm. two thousand one to two thousand and two. So um, there was. It was actually, it actually got a really good response, a really, really good response. It came out, it was really nice. Wow. Very, very nice, yeah. And, and when you do lines like that, do they, they sell them in the exclusive shops? And yeah, like uh, those, for them specifically, we were getting them ready for uh, trade shows, uh, which is called the Magic uh, Trade Show in Vegas. And so it comes to, uh, twice a year. And uh, they set up booths there, and they sell to the public wholesale, you know, and the people come in, order it things of that nature so yeah huh. so w when they have the fashion shows do is it as crazy as I've only, only seen on TV of course but is it as crazy behind the scenes as you normally see on TV it can be and most of the time it depends on how big it is if it's pretty big and you got 
you know, people coming back to back and the lines mm -hmm. that are coming out, yeah, it can be very, very hectic. You know, and and yeah. you've done that. Yeah. You work with the models. And yeah, so and it it can be because you got to be on point. You have to be organized. You have to have everything ready. Everything has to be, you know, pressed. Everything has to be right length. You know, makeup has to be done. Hair has to be done. So it's more or less. You just have to be on point. You know, and it just has to look great. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. And the, the line that's behind you, I'm just admiring it. They tell me, stop looking at the clothes, but <laughs> tell me about the clothes that are behind you. They are beautiful. Um, I, okay, the clothing that's behind me is a new clothing line. Um, it's, it's actually um, not on my website as of yet, okay. but I'm, what I'm getting it ready for is a Santa Fe Fashion Week. Okay. And it's coming in October 23rd through the 26th at the Buffalo Thunder Resort in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I'm creating a, a new uh, clothing line under the Hopi One Sacks logo. And um, so right now, what I have be what's behind me is um, I have two shirts. One is the black and one is the rust. And they're my version of, uh, well, in the Native culture, you have ribbon shirts, which okay. are for ceremonial purposes, things right. of that nature, yeah. powwows. And I, what I did with it, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love you know, traditional and things of that nature, but I just didn't like the look of it. Some of them have, you know, the ribbons hanging off and it's hard to wash. You always hear like feedback from people coming in and saying, especially the men that wear them, when they wash them, they, it always gets all tangled up, oh, you know, right. and they have to press it. And so you got a lot of work to do with it. And then you the know, cleaners won't even take them. Exactly. They, they say, nope. So what I did is I went ahead and made sure that everything was sewn down, you know, and I just gave it a new look and I, I I kind of urbanized it, you know, brought it to more contemporary stylish mm -hmm. of it, and, you know, I brought it up to date. And so that's what I did with, with um, the rust colored and the black colored. And I really, really like them. Both the men's and the women's clothes are just so unique. Uh, I also did, you know, a color blocking, what's it, what, what is really in right now. I used mm -hmm. the print versus the actual, you know, color, um, a solid color, mm -hmm. and um, then uh, kind of did a, a touch of the ribbon in another, in another contrast color, and uh, it, it looks really great. It does, and I even like the little touch on the back where you have the ribbon and the button. Oh, the, the detail it's in the back really of the neck, nice. yes, very, yes. Very it's very all nice. in the detail, yes. And your women's line? The women's, I have, um, right now what you're seeing is the um, turquoise colored and the rust colored um, um, poncho and it's a v-neck um, and it's about they're a little bit oversized because you know it's all in that baggy look you know mm -hmm. you want to feel comfortable the the weight of it the fabric it's very nice it's, it's a it's a poly um it has a little poly cotton mixture in it with a little bit of lycra so it's a very fine um there's also a rayon mixture with a little bit of lycra lycra in there as well so um, the print on it is more of a, I took it from an actual rug print, you know, oh. and I've heard people say that it's called like a native, uh, in the Navajos, it's like a spider woman type print. I, I'm not exactly sure what it was. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't where I was actually referencing it to mm -hmm. when I designed it, when I actually designed the print and actually started printing it, it just the way it came out. So, um, you know, um, I liked a lot of the symbolisms that, you know, the clothing carries. Um, and it's a lot of the sacred symbolisms that I really strive to and the color and how it works with the actual pattern versus the actual fabric. And yeah. Very striking. And as I said, I have an original on. The material's very comfortable. Yes. You know, I would th I normally wouldn't wear long sleeves in the summertime because it's so hot, but it's very cool material. Yes. So it could be worn in any season. Right. What you're wearing is actually it's actually cre uh, it's a 3 quarter bell sleeve that's flared at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's, that's, I didn't want to make, at first it was a long sleeve and then I edited it and brought it up three quarter and then brought this two. Yeah. So you can actually see it. Can you see? So it's great. Fly away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angel. <laughs> and I actually, with the print, what I did is I actual, a lot of women like that contoured look. So what I did is I actually color blocked it on the sides 
So when you're looking at it, it gives you that streamlined look, so it makes it look really nice. I like that. No, of course I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll just blend into the background, and they'll think it's the part of the chair, and this is me down here. <laughs> That's the illusion, right? There you go. That's it. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, some of us are fluffy. <laughs> and so well, it's it, all about the color, too. I really love, you know, the hot pinks, the cor you know, the coral color, and the blues, and, the, you know, and I, I really love that. It yeah, looks very, I, very striking. Of course, I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was really, really taken by your line because you can't find anything like that, anything close to that. No, it's different. Um, and it does get good re When I first came out with the very, very first line that I did that's on the website, um, hopewensex.com, it got great reviews. Immediately, I, I had done a fashion show in Phoenix up in, in Scottsdale. And um, one of the newscasters from there, uh, Mary Kim Titla, she actually was the MC there, and um, she immediately approached me after that and asked me to do an interview um, on her station um, and within the next couple days, and mm -hmm. the same thing. And so I said, okay. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. So luckily, I was already in Phoenix, and mm -hmm. I ended up staying there, and um, it worked out really nicely. Like you and ended up staying up here in Northern California Yeah. come on the show. <laughs> exactly. And I'm so but, glad yeah. you did. Thank you. Because... Um, you know, I see, you see native designs and prints, but usually t-shirts. Right. And only t-shirts. And after seeing your line, how beautiful it was, and then I went to your website and saw that it was completely different because you didn't have these on there. And it was just, I was just so impressed with all of your, right. your designs that you have. Well, originally, I've already shot these, um, you know, in terms of uh, a photo shoot, mm -hmm. but I haven't put them on there because what I'm actually getting ready to do is open up my boutique in San Diego. So what I'm going to do is it's going to be on the Yellow Blossom Boutique. Um, Yellow Blossom is uh, the meaning in English, uh, in, um is the meaning of Yellow Blossom. It's Yellow Blossom. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be at the Yellow Blossom Boutique, and so you'll be able to see view everything there. And I'm working on that now, so it's just not, I just it's not ready to go. And when yet. is the boutique opening? I'm plan. I, right, okay. Right now, I have three different locations that I'm looking at. I haven't really pinned them down yet because, of course, it's coming to um, square footage and and sure. you know, the best deals that they're willing to give me. And so we're working on that right now. And um, so my plan of attack is August, September, the end of okay. yeah, right there. So is it going to be in the downtown area, or um, have you one of them that? right? Yeah, two of them right now are in the gas lamp. Yes, in San Diego. So very touristy. Um, right. It's actually a very good place to have it. One of them is just a little bit further out, mm -hmm. and in this really cool little area. I forgot what the name of it was, but it's so cultural, uh -huh. and. It may end up being there because that's the best. When I walked in there, it was just about feeling. It's about the energy that's around there. I mean, it would be great to really have it in downtown San Diego, but it's just, you know, it's really with me, it's energy. It's, sure. it's that spiritualness. It's that connection of where you envision it to be and where it can grow. So that's where I really want it. I, it I'm still choosing right now, but I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards that. So, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you um, ever considered going on like the, uh, what's the TV show, the... Um, Project Runway. Project Runway, I always forget <laughs> Yes. Um, actually, I was actually, in 2004, I was supposed to go on season three, and I signed up, and I auditioned, and I got in, got my foot in the door, but I had already designed, I, at that time, I'd already uh, started working for Fernando Vargas, the boxer. Mm -hmm. And we were about to go to the trade show again in Vegas. Um, and we, I was already done with the line. It was priced, it was ready to go, but they still needed me to be there. And most of the time, the designers are there. And I thought, okay, well, mm -hmm. I can take a break and go and shoot and then come back. But they, his lawyer wouldn't release me to mm -hmm. do that. So I was going to do it anyways, you know, as strong-headed as I am and was going to say, okay, well, look, you know, I, I want to do this. I'm going to go for it. And it was my, you know, it was my uh, foot in the door type thing where I can actually just do it. And so they kind of said, no, you're going to get sued. If you do mm -hmm. that, you have to be there. You're under contract, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So that's, I had to, I, I couldn't do it. And so, but it turned out to be actually pretty good anyways, because 
I ended up working him for four years, and they kept mm. me on for four years, up and up to about uh, the end of 2008. So now I was reading your bio, and um, an outfit could be fifteen thousand dollars. One outfit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> well, with with that. Um, Okay, at that time, uh, when the bio was written, um, I was working for uh, a, a men designer in Beverly Hills. And uh, the company was under Scott Hill at the time. And we used to, I mean, he had all name brands there. He had his own there. We had Donna Karen, we had um, Calvin Klein, Versace. God, we had everybody come in there. Uh, Rod Stewart, all these really big people. and. You know, some of that clothing was marked up to be that high, or it could actually, it could be a pants, two pants, two shirts. It could be a sport coat. It could be a, you know, a sport coat and a pant. It could be shoes that kind of accumulated up to that price. So did, would the stars come into the stores or did you go to them? No, they would come into the stores. In the beginning, um, when I first started there, um, Majority of them would come into the store because we were so, we were right there by the Ivy and um, the, we were actually literally across the street from the Ivy and that's where all the stars come and they would eat. When you would see them like on, on TMZ or something like that, mm -hmm. they'd always be shooting them at the Ivy, you know, coming in and out of the uh -huh. Ivy, you know, lunchtime or whatever. And because the Ivy had like um, an outside type of um, like place, yeah, where you or... could eat, you know, uh -huh. outside and inside. And so they would always come from there and come into the store. And God, we had everybody. I mean, literally everybody that you can think of, um, you know, TV series, sitcoms, you know, musicians, mm -hmm. actors, everybody came in It was in a there. place to be. Yeah, be it was very, but it was very, very cool. Yeah, it was like a gallery. Oh, really? A very cool gallery, yeah. So would they wear a size like double zeros and stuff? <laughs> um, yeah, and They're yes and tiny. no. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Um, it really depends. I mean, we did a lot of menswear and we did a lot of, he did more menswear than he did women's oh, wear. Okay. So um, we started getting into women's wear a little bit more later on, you know, like a couple of years down. But uh, we had a lot of men, a lot of the men come through there, and their wives come in. A lot of the wives came in buying for them. We had a lot of the models okay. coming in buying for their husbands, uh -huh. and, you know, their boyfriends, things like that. So yeah. But from well, it seems like a lot of the men on television are small too. Uh, well, maybe the, like like a lot of the reporters and so forth, and even some of the actors are they? Yeah, they are. They, when you I see mean, them in person, they're, they're a lot smaller. No, they they're are like of oh God. They're probably I would say like five nine. Yes, I know. Some of them yeah. are like five seven. You know. Yeah. And it, it, the camera, you know, it makes you look smaller. But uh -huh. I mean, you know, I mean, you can't really judge it on camera uh, when you're watching a television. You know, some of them are very small, yeah. short. The only thing say. I've ever been to <laughs> is the Alma Awards. Have you gone to any of those? That's no, I have not. I've actually had a chance to go do that, but mm -hmm. I just never, I just never have. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to several of those that the National Council of Alaska put on, and that's where I got to see a lot of the actors. I thought they're really tiny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Mario and all. They're really tiny. They are tiny. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even like um, some of the actors that I know that worked on the Twilight series, a lot of them were like. God, like five seven, five eight, five nine, yeah. Oh wow, like Benjamin Bratt's tall. <laughs> yeah, he's tall. Yeah, he's probably what I think five eleven, probably nice five. Yeah, taller. somewhere in there. Yeah. Nice tall thin guy. Well, it's so exciting to have you on here, and I wish you a lot of success. And I know you will have it with your boutique. Yes. I definitely want to go down and visit in San Diego. Yeah, it should be. You know, majority of the stuff I have seventy percent of, of everything ready. Um, it's just a matter of finalizing, you know, the space, the dates, and just getting it all, pull, pulling it all together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And what kind of clothing will you have like this? I will have my clothing line there, of course. Um, I wish that could be the only thing in there, but it, it will not, you know. Um, I'm going to be holding other brands in there as well. I'm going to do the pottery. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to jewelry, of course, because you have to have the accessories, probably purses. Um, you know, I'm still working on, on building um, the accessory part of it, so I want to round it. So you know, you cannot. I mean, so that way you can go in there and you you don't only buy purchased clothing. Mm -hmm. You can buy a bracelet with it, a nice bracelet, a nice necklace with mm -hmm. it. You know, something a, a handbag or whatever. Yeah. Then will the theme be a native 
overall? I mean, like with the jewelry be native? Yeah, I think or? I'm going to start it off that way. And um, but I want to really open it up to everybody. I wanted mm -hmm. to have a broad range, mm -hmm. so I may be able to bring like Western wear into it as well, mm -hmm. as well, you know, and kind of bring it up to that cowboys and Indians type thing, mm -hmm. you know, theme. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Well, I have seen in some of the catalogs where they they have both the um, native and then the kind of the Western. Yes. Yes. Um, theme in it as well, you know, with the hats and the boots right, and right. the so forth. Because a lot of things that where you wear the long skirts, you would wear the boots with. Yeah, um, I'm actually uh, putting together now also another skirt line uh, that actually I worked on a, a while back. I just never brought it out, but I'm revamping it. I'm, um, I guess you could say I'm, you know, I'm going to put more accessories onto it, je jeweled. I'm going to kind of jewel it, you know here and there, and um, studs and things of that nature, and kind of really pop it out. Plus prints, things of that nature. So I'm working on that, and you're going to probably be able to see that on the runway. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, in Santa Fe. OK, and that's going to be when? In October? Uh, it's going to be October 23rd and 20, 23rd through the 26th, um, uh, 2013. It's going to be at the Buffalo Thunder Resort. And I will be on uh, stage on the 26th. And I think that's that Saturday. I think it's the, that's the Saturday, if I'm correct. But um, we are going to have one of the people there. It's not confirmed yet, but they're in talks with her, Patricia Michaels, who's on the project. Um, that she was one of the, uh, fin the final, finalists. The two finalists, right? Yeah, and uh, she didn't win, but um, she got to the very end. And um, they're in talks with her right now to bring her on uh, to share the runway mm -hmm. with us as we do this. So um, we're still, but. It's not confirmed yet, but we're pretty sure she's going to be there. How exciting. I'll yes. have to plan my next trip. I go to Albuquerque pretty often, so okay. at least every couple of months to see my mom. And so I'll you, try and go then. Okay, and you can also uh, get updates on um, SantaFeFashionWeek.com. Okay. Yeah, so you can, you can go there. Thank you so much for staying in town to come on the show. No problem. It was such a pleasure to meet you, and we look forward to big, big things from you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook. We'll see you again next week. Good night.